What is going on my friends and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the digital assets fun flow report. This is something we like to do every single week to get an idea of what the lizard people or I mean the whales to see what they are doing as it always gives us a good idea of where we should be allocating some of our funds. And so with that said we're going to be taking a look at what exactly the whales are doing then we're going to be taking a look at what I personally have been doing over the last few days and some of my plans for investing. And so with that said let's not waste any more time at all and let's get straight into the video. So looking at the digital asset fund flows reports brought to you by coinshares.com. They are not a partner, but I just really like their content. Um, we are going to see that we had a pretty solid week last week, honestly, pretty solid week. What you can see is that the digital asset investment products saw a inflow of for the sorry, geez, digital asset investment products saw inflows for the fourth consecutive week, totaling $185 million with May seeing $2 billion worth of inflows, pushing year to day inflows past the $15 billion mark. Now, taking a look at last week, specifically what we can see is that grayscale did get back to their selling ways with about negative 260 million but of course we did see that getting eaten up by something like iShares at 300 million right under 300 million fidelity picking up 177 millions 21 shares at 5 million and then bitwise actually putting in a 40 million inflow not too damn shabby now i will say that it is good to see that iShares is kind of getting back in its groove a little bit we did see them kind of step back a bit we saw something like 21 shares go in we saw fidelity obviously carrying a lot of weight as well but while those two are slowing down it seems as if iShares is picking up and it is cool because it feels like they're doing this with each other right like when iShares is up the other two aren't doing too much but when iShares isn't going crazy the other two are picking up more I don't know if there's a reason for that and if you have an idea let me know down in the comments below but it is nice to see that they are carrying each other's weight when necessary and I do like to see that they are still canceling out Grayscale I mean and imagine what's gonna happen man when Grayscale stops that damn selling it's telling, telling you it's going to open up doors to where it won't make a huge difference but it would have you know it would have basically doubled you know almost uh, no, maybe not as much but it would have almost doubled um the amount of inflows that we saw last week and so because of that it's it just let it cook let it cook that's all i'll say now based off of that what have they been buying and what have they been selling this is where it gets interesting okay so Bitcoin coming in at a $148 million inflow. Not bad. Um, we've definitely seen more. We've seen less. Not bad. Pretty um, solid week at the end of the day. Um, Ethereum. Now, this is where it's interesting. Ethereum coming in on a $33.5 million inflow. Why? The Ethereum ETF approval is either, you know, it's just kind of, it's one of the things that's like a p approved, pending, blah, 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 whatever. But the wells have been going in and they have been buying. Now, this week alone took the month to date positive and the year to date positive, bringing Ethereum back in the game, baby. And that's pretty damn cool because I do think that people were sleeping on Ethereum. You guys know that I actually was buying some Ethereum before, right before the pump happened on accident. I purely was like, I don't know why everyone's selling. I'm just going to buy some and that ended up happening that ended up playing out really well and so because of that it is nice to see ETH back in the mix because I'm telling you when ETH has liquidity you guys it usually sticks around a long time and floods and like kind of drips into some of these different ecosystems for months and months and months so I love to see this happening I love Ethereum liquidity I feel like Ethereum liquidity fuels the entire altcoin market like no other crypto can like no other crypto can so you know as a Solana stan, you know, a Solana fanboy, I definitely do always feel that like internal weird little minor competition feeling with Ethereum. But at the end of the day, I've always said, I want to see Solana succeed. I want to see Ethereum succeed. I want to see them all succeed because that's for the betterment of crypto. And so this is better for, th th this is amazing. It's very good. Whether you're a Solana fanboy, Binance fanboy, don't care who you are, seeing Ethereum finally getting some recognition and some growth is a good thing no matter which way you cut it. Now, speaking of Solana, Solana coming in on another pretty damn strong week, 5.8 million dollars worth of inflows pretty solid uh that's been about the amount that has been getting inflows every week for a while now so it's looking at 24.8 mil on the month 35 mil on the year to date not looking too damn bad still substantially outperforming anything else cardano nothing chain link nothing xrp nothing short bitcoins are getting wrecked litecoin not really much multi-asset negative so overall nothing even really comparing to what Solana's doing and then of course ethereum absolutely smashing it bitcoin absolutely smashing it and so Overall, the wells seem pretty content. They seem pretty happy. I do think that this is going to eventually flow and f kind of create another one of these little uh, micro cap and altcoin cycles like we are seeing. It's so weird. Like we're seeing a little bit of a meme coin cycle right now, but it's being caused by something external. Kind of odd. Um, but I do think that seeing this liquidity flowing into Ethereum, seeing it flowing into Bitcoin again, seeing all of that happening will eventually funnel down into your altcoins, your smaller ones. And I do think we're going to see those top 15 to top 30s starting getting hit pretty soon. And so because of that, Everything was good. Everything's good. I like it. Um, 
yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what, really no complaining. No complaining that I can do. Month to date, again, on um, on crypto in general, right around $2 billion worth of inflows. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful month. Absolutely beautiful week. Now, in terms of what I'm doing, let's kind of dive into that side of things to get a feel for the different things that I am buying, selling, etc. Now, before we actually do continue on with the video, I did want to tell you really quick about something that happened with DYDX, which is, of course, a company that we have talked about here on the channel before. Now, the news that we just got was that DYDX was launching on OnChain Earn. Now, OnChain Earn is, of course, something that is hosted by OKX, one of the biggest centralized exchanges in the world. And so this is obviously a very, very big deal for DYDX. Now, what they go ahead and say from D, uh, from OKX is that this mo this move aims to provide users with effortless access to on-chain rewards. Now, this introduction of DYDX subscriptions on on-chain earn brings forth several key features. No subscription limits, so users can stake DYDX tokens without encountering any subscription constraints, enabling greater flexibility and participation. Simplified operational steps in which OKX has prioritized user experience by implementing simplified operational procedures, ensuring a hassle-free staking process and then lastly real on-chain annualized earnings participants can look forward to tangible annualized earnings through their state dydx tokens on the on-chain earn platform now the reason why i of course think that this is so important is because as they mentioned before it's becoming much more effortless and much easier for dydx as a whole i mean literally all you have to do for example is if you head over to the okx website boom you get there you're gonna go to grow let's get past this boom there we go you're going to grow you're going to press earn actually easy even easier grow on chain earn once you go there you scroll down a little bit go to the search bar dydx enter bam look at this and you can just press subscribe smash just like that so easy so simple absolutely beautiful and i think that overall with their goal making this much more of an effortless seamless transition and something that's much more accessible this is absolutely a huge step in the right direction and is again someone someone who's talked about dydx here on the channel before i think this was a huge step and of course being a partner with them it is something that i wanted to share with you and so of course with that in mind we of course will now get back into the video Alrighty, so looking at what I am buying, let's actually head over to HG Access. This is our Discord server. It is linked down in the description below, but myself and a bunch of other creators contribute to it, so go check it out. But overall, looking at what I personally am buying, um, let's go back to just May 30th, because I've honestly not done much since then. Or go to May 26th, make it easy. Um, what you can see here is that I've really been diversifying where I'm putting my funds. I've been allocating funds to different levels, big, small, medium, etc. And you can see that here. So I just bought a little bit of render on May 26th. Um, I got into a pre-sale, the swap and go pre-sale that you you guys saw over on my channel and some stuff like that a couple of days ago um i was buying some bitcoin as it was testing support i bought some solana as it was testing support so i've definitely been doing some dollar cost averaging on support levels i have bought some pika um from pika moon you guys did see that video the other day uh i didn't get into i did get into the fjb pre-sale that we talked about here on the channel that ended up absolutely taking off which is beautiful we got some beautiful gains on that um going a little bit forward what we can see here is that i did pick up a little uh, i closed sorry a little bit of my jasmine position today because i did take some profits off of that considering we hit our breakout target and then lastly i didn't add a crypto called toshi to my holdings um, my meme coin bag and the reason i had picked this one up was quite simply because i just liked what they're doing and i realized i wasn't allocated and kind of um i I didn't put enough money into base cryptos, in my opinion. I think base has a lot more potential than I originally thought it did. And so because of that, I was like, you know what? I think it's about time that I really start adding to my Toshi, or not my Toshi bag, but just adding to my, my base bag in general. And Toshi was the only one amongst the major players that I feel like I hadn't allocated to. Now, if you don't know about them, who they are, it's again, it's called a company called Toshi. And they are one of the biggest base chains out there, or base cryptos out there, that really doesn't get like as much attention as they should in my opinion now what they're doing is they're taking that meme plus utility approach you guys know that generally what i do is i look for cryptos and i try to sort them into different categories are you a meme are you utility are you meme plus utility like what's your uh, what's your plan of attack here and what they're doing is they're creating a meme for the branding and the excitement and the culture but then using that excitement and branding and culture to create utilities and tools that will actually be beneficial to not only the world of crypto but more specifically base chain itself now what you can see here is that some of those tools include things like a multi-sender, token locker, liquidity locker, a swap, a token launcher itself, and a launch pad for different cryptos, especially ones that are going to launch on the base chain. And that's actually going to be beneficial because that will allow them to partner up and kind of network and interact with many of these other crypto companies that will launch that inevitably some of them will end up turning into majorly successful companies and they will have that partnership with them. Now, a lot of these different tools are still under development and production, but they have been making a lot of progress with this thing, especially as a result of 
of their DAO. Now, what you can see is they have had their DAO live in which people have been voting and making up their opinions and letting people know exactly what they're thinking and how things should go here with Toshi. And I do like that because this type of stuff is what's going to end up allowing all of these different tools to be developed as quickly as possible. And so because of that, they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in, of money allocated for marketing, development, and much more. And I definitely think that they have a lot of potential. It's one that I had heard of on multiple occasions, but I really hadn't gotten into yet just because I was busy. But it was one of those ones that if I'm going to invest in a base cryptos, Toshi is one of the ones you need to check out. And so I did create a bag for them. And I'll probably update you here on the channel here and now, um, every now and then as they do continue to develop. And so because of that, again, that is why I did add them over to my bag here. And I did go into um, invest into some Toshi. So with that said, I mean, realistically, that's a bit about all I've been doing. You have not really been doing too much. Maybe Bitcoin, Solana, Render, Jasmine, your basic ones. Nothing too, too crazy. And that has been about it for me recently. You guys know I was buying a lot more whenever we were in that dip. I don't really like to buy whenever we're pumping. And so because of that, of course, I will continue to update you as this does happen, as I do buy things, sell things, as the wells do make their moves because they're lizard people who control the markets and we need to pay attention to them. And so overall, of course, I will continue to update you on all that. But of course, guys, I hope you guys do enjoy these types of videos. If you do, you can let me know by liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you are new. And I can't wait to see you all next time. Peace out, everybody.